Hi all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we will study how we can convert second row into header. Okay, so here is the input data set on the left side wherein you can see there are three rows and the second row is the header row and in the output data set, we are required to convert the second row as header and then land the other rows as data rows that is the second and the third row. So how we'll accomplish this in Data Factory? We're going to demonstrate that. So let's go to the Data Factory. First in the storage account inside the test input folder, I have placed this source CSV file. So let's preview it first. Okay, so here is my file with the same data and then in the data factory, we'll go and create a new pipeline. Let's name this as second row header. And then we need to take the data flow activity and we'll name the data flow activity as data flow second row header. Next job is to add the source. So the source I've already told is present as a CSV file. So we'll add the source, connect to the data set, which is inside the Gen2 account as delimited text. Let's say second row header input. The link service is already there. And the file path is test and folder as source CSV header dot CSV. So we have selected the file path. Let's now, for now, leave the first row as header option unchecked. We'll check it later. So let's click OK. Let's go to the data preview tab and click on refresh. Since the data flow debug option is already enabled, we can click on refresh to fetch the data. So here's the data. Since we have not defined or not checked the first row as header option, the column names are given like column underscore one, two, three, four. Okay. And in the source settings, we are going to use the configuration called skip line count. Okay. So that we skip the line, skip line count for which I've created a separate video demonstrating the use of skip line count. So we have not used the first row as header and we are going to skip line count. So how many rows we have to skip in order to make ID as the first row or header. So we have to skip one. We'll do it here. Skip one. If you go to the data preview, click on refresh. it will remove the first row and making the second row as the first row. So we have got ID, name, address, skill as the first row. But we have not check mark the first row as header, hence these column names are appearing. So let's go to the data set, open the data set. And here in the data set also, if we have forgot to mark the first row as header, we can go to the data set and mark it as checked. Okay. Now, since we have marked it as checked, we can again go to the data preview and click on refresh. So now we have got the columns as column one, two, three, four, and then ID, name, address, skill as the drifted columns. When we have checked first row as header, we have got this result where column one, two, three, four are displayed here and since we have enabled the skip line count, the second row is treated as the first row as drifted column. Okay. And if you hover over it, it will say this drifted column is not in the source schema and therefore can only be referenced with pattern matching expressions. So when this drifted column appears, we have the setting in the data preview map drifted. It will appear if the data flow debug option in, is enabled and we are seeing it in data preview. So we'll make all drifted columns explicit. If you click over it, 
it will add a derived column transformation soon after the source and the columns will be set over here with the expression converting it to string by name and those values okay so we'll go to the data preview of this derived column transformation which is created by map drifted so here now you can see that the columns are created okay and now they are not displaying as drifted columns next we are not interested to get these columns okay column 1 to column 4 so in order to remove extra columns we have select transformation so we will add select transformation and from the select settings under this map drifted columns we will delete the not required columns okay so we are left with the desired columns we'll go to the data preview click on refresh so here you can see in the output that id name address and skill has become the header so what we did at the source level we have the setting skip line count we have made it to one in the source options check the first row as header option in the data preview we could see the drifted columns created we will click on map drifted so that derived column will create those drifted columns explicitly and then we'll select only the relevant columns okay using these steps we have got this second row as the header row now our task is to store the other two rows as the values under this header row so what we'll do we'll create another flow okay another flow with the same source and we'll only concentrate on the values okay so we'll again connect to the source let's select the data set name it as second row header input to browse to the location of the file so csv header or csv first where the header we will not check in this case click ok so we'll go to the data preview and click on refresh here the data appeared column 1 2 3 4 and we have got the rest of the data and in the first flow we have managed to create the second row as header okay so we will separate the two flows let the first flow be getting us the header and the second flow the data so what we will do next is that we will use the second flow only for the data that means only these two rows since we have already separated the header so we will use a filter transformation which comes under the row modifier section and in the filter since we have got this extra row that is the header row we will filter it out so we'll write here filter on the expression so here in order to remove this row we can write where column is not equal to id filter that out so here in the expression builder we will use the first column and we'll write not equals to id okay we will data preview it this second row will not be taken into consideration this looks okay let's go to the data preview click on refresh for the filter transformation so here we have got just the two rows okay and in the first flow we have got the header along with one extra row so what we'll do we'll again here add the filter transformation and in the filter condition we can write to remove this row where id is equals to 2 so we are not interested where id should not be equal to 2 okay we'll click on save and finish then here in the data preview of the filter 2 we can preview the data so here you can see that no output data is appearing only the header is there our next job is to combine 
the data of the first and the second flow because in the first flow we have got the headers and in the second flow the values of the data set. So in order to combine it we have this union transformation. So we'll add union transformation which comes under the multiple inputs and outputs section. We'll add union and then the incoming stream is already filtered to and union with stream will be filter 1. So we'll select filter 1 from here select filter 1 and union by we are going to do with position. Why position? Because in the second stream we have the column names as different right column 1 2 3 4 and here in the first stream we have it as ID name address and skill. So by name if we'll do it will match the name but here in our case we are matching the position. We have four columns so just match it with position. So we'll union by using position and then we'll go to the data preview and click on refresh. So we have got ID name address skill as the header and from the second flow we have got the values under the header. So you can see that this is the desired result. Okay, We wanted the second row to become the header and the rest of the rows under that header. So we can land it into a sync Let's say a CSV file this time as second row header output. File path this time will give test output. First row as header, click OK. In the settings, we'll go and we'll output it to a single file by setting the set single partition on file name as second row header output dot csv here is a typo second row header output dot csv and then we'll validate the mapping we'll publish the changes and then will perform a debug run. So we can see the debug run or the data flow is in progress. Let's wait for it to finish. In the meantime, we'll go to the container and in the test output folder where our file is going to land. Let's go back here, click on refresh. It's still in progress. So the data flow succeeded. Let's refresh here. Second row header output.csv is generated. Let's click here. In the edit, we'll go and preview the data. So we have got the second row as header. So we have accomplished the task using data flow activity and the different transformations inside it. I hope you've got the idea of this scenario. Thank you for watching the video. Happy learning. Bye.